Hey everybody, welcome back. So I think I've finally cleared away enough rubble in this room to begin my next little project. And I had planned on doing a K-cup holder. That's my wife's suggestion and I really like it. But I just haven't settled on a design that I both think looks good and will print well with a lot of infill. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand on my last video where I, um, I did an introduction to parametric modeling. And I'm going to finish up the box, or actually I think I'm going to start from scratch, the storage box for my little TS-100 electronic soldering iron. I actually have two of those. I, these, I really like them. They come in a box like this, and to put it, in order to put it away, you got to take the tip off it every time, and then you know I'd wind up losing the tool and the screws. So I punched a hole in the end of it so, um, so I could fit it in, but that's not really acceptable. It also comes with a little bit of tools and um, a couple extra screws and you know I'll lose those too. So I want to make a box that holds it. It also uses a power supply. It needs a power supply. This is a 19 volt Toshiba notebook power supply. I've got a bunch of notebook power supplies so I just happen to have this one. You can buy these with a power supply. Uh, it'll use from 12 to 24 volts. If you stay down 12 volts, they take quite a while to heat up. Up around 19 or 20, they heat up really quickly. I like it a lot. And you can buy a power... If you buy one without a power supply, you can buy a, a 24 volt power supply off the um, Chinese retailer sites for five, six, seven bucks. So it's not a big deal. So you'll also notice I have a new addition and that is my new little boom microphone. I got tired of wearing my Logitech gaming headset, which I really like, but I wear it enough for gaming. So this is a Zingyu BM800. This kit was highly recommended to me. It's only 35 bucks. You get the mic, the suspension mount, the boom, a clamp. You get it all for like 35 bucks. But in order to use it at the distance I'm using it at, you will need a phantom power 24 volt power supply. The 24 or 48, I forget which. Anyway, I kind of got 24 in my head since because of the soldering iron. I think it might be 48. Anyway, the phantom power supply is about 15 bucks. So and now you see it sounds um, two, two and a half feet from it and it sounds fine. So I also had to take the little, you see over here, my little wire rack have these plastic, black plastic caps. There's no place to use the clamp that came with it because this is hollow underneath the desk for a bit. So I printed, I took the cap off and printed a little nylon ferrule. I have a 3D printer is great, isn't it? I printed a little nylon ferrule that pushed down tight in there and then the boom pushed down tight and that now sits in there really well. I'm really happy with that. I can see I'm shaking everything. It fits in so well. So here's what I want to make. I want to make that little box and I have my drawing here. Hey, whoops. And you'll see I have a, come on, I have a, let's see if I can get it out of that bright light. I have a spot, a compartment for the power cord, a compartment for two that'll take two irons with the tips attached, a spot for just tips because they do make extra tips with different size ends on them, a little spot for the tools and extra screws, and a spot for some soldering paste and solder. I think that would be really nice, you know, to carry over to somebody's house to keep it all together. And I am going to make a lid for this box. It's going to be a two-piece entire box. The lid and the box are going to be two separate pieces because I want to be able to take the lid off and fit it underneath the bottom of the box. That will cut down its space it uses when you're using the iron. And um, if I made a box with a hinge, I'd just bust it anyway. So we all know I would, so I'm not going to. So let's pop over to Fusion. And before anybody says buy a Hacko, there's one out in the garage. But I'm not carrying it around and I'm not bringing it into this little bitty 10 by 10 overcrowded room. So let's pop over to Fusion. Let me switch to screen cap. Pop over to Fusion. And here we are. This is what I made in my parametric modeling video, my introduction to the basics of parametric modeling. Anyway, here about, um, I don't know, a week ago, five days, a week ago, whatever. I had planned on going ahead and using this one, but I'm going to start from square one, I think. And um, so let's pop over to a new sketch. And I've saved you a little bit of grief of watching me type all the parameters in. So I'm going to come up to modify. If you start from square one and you know you're going to use parameters, you're going to put the parameters in at the very beginning. So come up to modify and change parameters. And this will be blank. I've put a bunch of these in just to save you having to watch me type them in and having to listen to me cuss when I couldn't type them in right. So anyway, I have box width, box depth, box height. 
I have the width and depth for the power supply, width and depth for the soldering iron, width and depth for the tips, width and depth for the tools, and width and depth for the, the little compartment for solder. I left one out because I want to show people who haven't gone and watched that video how to do it. So you come to modify and param change parameters. And here next to user parameters, you'll see a plus. You click that little plus and this little box open that says add user parameter. You give it a name. In this case, it's going to be wall thickness. I'm just going to call it wall thick. And unit is going to be millimeters and the expression is going to be the number of millimeters. And I normally make two millimeter walls, but since this I think is going to get some rough treatment, I'm going to make them three. I could put a comment in here saying, hey, I made it three because I expect this to get rough treatment. And but I'm not going to bother and I'm going to say OK. So now down here I have user parameter three millimeters. Click OK and let's get this thing started. Click create a sketch. I am going to use this bottom plane. You create, you create a sketch on a surface or a plane. I have no surfaces now, so let's use this bottom plane. I also like to work on the bottom plane upwards because I think of the bottom plane as my print surface. So it kind of, it kind of helps keep things straight in my head. So we want to sketch a rectangle and we're going to use a center rectangle and one of the things I want to go into in this video is at its very most basic level joints and maybe even a little motion study at the end. If I thought that my print bed was big enough to print the lid and the box at the same time, you know, with the lid upside down next to the box because I don't want a lot of infill, I would probably pick two point rectangle and build my bottom over here so then I could build my lid next to it. But I can't build this all at once. The Ender 3 is not big enough. And to be honest, the, my bigger printer, the Alpha YZ20, I might squeak it on, but I no, it wouldn't. So we're just gonna we're just gonna go ahead and use a center rectangle because I'm gonna have to save these. I'm gonna make these bo these components, not bodies, and I am going to um, save each one as an individual STL file. So center rectangle, put your pointer in the center, click and drag out. Now, it has me set on the width of my box as I do this. So I'm going to type in BOX, and you'll see it brings up my three box, my box parameters. So I want box width, and I'm going to hit enter on box width. I'm going to hit tab to go over to depth. I'm going to type in box again. And there, actually, I could type in B since I think it was the only B in the list. And we're going to make this one box width. No, wait a minute. This is box depth. Sorry. Box depth. And hit enter to lock it in. And now you'll notice that it actually put the numbers in. But in front of those numbers, you'll see FX. That means that number isn't something I typed in. It's a function of a parameter. Or it's a function of something else. In this case, it's the function of the parameters I typed in. So we need to extrude this. So let's hit E for extrude. Let's click on that. And we're going to extrude this up. And again, B, I could type box, but <laughs> box is the only B in there. So we want to make this box height, box H. I hit enter on that, hit enter to lock it in. And now we have our box, except that's not a box, it's brick. So we're going to click modify and shell. And now we're going to click that top surface. And how much are we going to shell it? We're going to shell it wall thick. And there is now, and let's hit enter to lock it in, there is now our basic box with the wall thickness. Now, if you didn't watch that video of mine, you will, I'll show you one of the beauty of using parameters. And that is how easy I can change things. Instead of having to go, if I want to make this box, say I want to make that depth from 150 to 200. I could, if I did it the old-fashioned way, I would come back into this sketch and I would have to cha manually change that size. But since I use parameters, I'm going to come up to modify and change parameters. I'm going to find my box depth. I'm going to click on the 150 and I'm going to change that 150 to 200. And, whoops, that's 2000. Enter. And you know what I should have done? I should have moved this over here where we could have seen it. Whoops, that was crazy, wasn't it? Over here where we could have seen it, you'll see it when I change it back. And let's say I also wanted to change the wall thickness from 3 
to six. So I can change all my sizes right from this list. And since I gave them names, box W, box D, I know what they all are. I didn't name them size one, size two, size three, size four, or I wouldn't know what they were later. Or I'd have to look at a drawing where I had them, I had a legend on it. So I don't want the wall thickness at six millimeters, so I'm going to click back in there and say three, enter. And I don't want the box depth to be 200, I want it to be 150. Oops, so we're going to come in there and we're going to change that 200 back to 150 and enter and there you have it and you can also use um let me go back here and show you something you can also when you put in things and let's edit this sketch when you put in things like this box w i could put in box w minus wall thickness i can use mathematic formulas in there and now you'll see that I have 197, which is my box width of 200 minus the wall thickness of 3. That's actually kind of really handy, and I think you'll see it later on when we're making the compartments, because I didn't really allow for wall thickness in my compartments. So that'll be a fun thing to, to take a look at. So I'm just going to change this box to box width, because I want that to be 200, and enter, and now we're back to 200 and stop sketch and there we go so that's probably going to be enough for this time because when i make the compartments i do want to show the ability to use some some mathematical functions in the in the actual sizes that we put in i think that'll be pretty neat you'll find that that'll come in really handy doing a lot of different things and I'm going to want to start, I'm going to want to add the parameters for the lid too. So let's plan on that for next time. So that's going to be it for now. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I will try and put links to the things I talk about down below. If I forget, give me a nudge and I'll do it. Sometimes putting the links to the Chinese retailers is tough because links don't stay the same with them for very long. Prices fluctuate greatly. When I bought the... Um, all metal hot end for that I had in one of my other videos it was seven bucks and it was really the only one there so when I put the link in then the link changed and the link the price of the thing went up to 19 bucks but if you went back to the Chinese retailer and typed in all metal hot end CR 10 or all metal hot end under three you'd find them as low as two dollars and seventy five cents exact same thing and as high as twenty some odd bucks it's crazy so if I don't put links in or the links to the stuff at China disappears, you'll know why. I tend to put in either links to sales or links to like a main category like 3D printers and um, leave it at that. So there are some affiliate links down below to GearBest. If, um, if you'd use them, that'd be great. They don't cost you any more and they help me out. And um, if you like this video, like and subscribe, hit notifications, and I will catch you next time. Talk to you later. Bye for now.